So I was flipping, I was, I was driving Mamish to the Haliga Lake, but where else? And I was listening to my iPod and shuffle, and suddenly this nigga came on, opened up the windows, and it made traffic better. I'll show you, it goes like this. What's Haley got a Biasi Mamish? I didn't going? expect you here, Rabbi Yassi. I thought we were, I thought we were five ranking together. Joey, we? what's going on? I'll talk, it's a shmusic. I'll tell you the truth. I was walking through the Haley Crown Heights and I was like, it's a shmusic episode taking place with the Haley Gotta Biasi. <laughs> Gotta get involved. That's true. Mask or Biasi. From Flow Motion Studios in Brooklyn, New York, it's Schmoozit with Yassi's Wives. This episode featuring Aton Katz and Joey Newcomb. And now, here's your host, Yassi's Wives. So we are back. Welcome to Schmoozit, episode two from live at Flow Motion Studios. You guys thought you knew what music is all about. You know nothing. We're going to mix it up every single show. Today with me are recording artists, wedding bands, kumzitzes, whatever it is. He does it all. He's getting ready to shoot live in Jerusalem to first guest, Eitan Katz. <laughs> Good to you like all, Eitan. Good to see you. Little My intro. second guest just released his first album, his debut album, called To Be A Yid. To Be A Yid. To Be A Yid. He's released a bunch of singles even after that because he just doesn't want to stop. Of course, his latest music video, Thank You Hashem, just came out. Please welcome my second guest, Joey Yosef Nuka. Mamish a pleasure, mamish. So I just found out that you two know each other. You daven together, Shabbos. Do we know each other? <laughs> yes, we know each other. Very deeply, Rabbi Yassi. Very, very deeply. When I asked him what the name of the minion was, he was like, the Nusuch Sfarad minion. I was like, what? <laughs> it's another Sfarad minion of, of, of the White Show, the White Rockaway, Show. Right. Hashem, we've been there uh, for about five, six years already. Now, we don't mean that you guys happen to be in the there. You are Bali Tzvila there. Baruch Hashem, yeah. yeah. Hashem Yom Kippur, uh, we, we team up. We team up, we, we lead the services, Baruch Hashem. Who does Shachras, who does Musaf, or does it change every day? No, I do Musaf, mm -hmm. I do Shachras. I need to do Marav one night, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Marav one night. Yeah. yeah. But nobody would do mincha, you're saying? I would I'll do, do mincha on Yom Kippur. Oh. <laughs> I'll do mincha, yeah. Hey, well, is mincha. That, does that mean you're a fast all thrill? Is that what you're ending at? Yeah, oh. mincha on Yom Kippur is mamash gaval. You can sing the gunam mincha on Yom Kippur. You can never sing the gunam the whole rest of the year. Can. You can. Right? <laughs> That's One my time dream. I was in Mayron, there was a menu going on. Mm -hmm. You won't believe this. The menu going on my own, and the guy, mamash by Kedusha, starts singing, na wa 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 di da 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 it was a whole Kedusha, but Nagunim, it was Haelik Mamash. Really? Interesting. Amazing. Amazing. So, Eitan, me and you go way back. Yes, we do. Uh, anybody that's looking at Eitan's bio or whatnot sees that it started with your father of Shalom, who, of course, uh, was a chazan and a veteran singer. Is Rosh And he was yeah. seen on the market here, at least. I, I mean, where was it? The Hasidic Music Festival, which was a, right. a record that came out, I believe, in the late 60s or 70s. Probably late 70s, I late think. Late 70s. Your father was actually on that record. Yeah. yeah which is was. funny because a friend of mine actually just converted it to MP3, so I have. Oh, really? I have the entire record. So you'll have to send it to me after I'll have the to show. send it to you. So that was your father. And then your father met and played with Rib Shlomo in Narrative sure. Israel. Sure, sure. I guess the question everybody always wanted, wanted to know was, was is Eitan Katz's father Israeli or American? I never got a, a exact. He's Israeli or not, he's your neither. father? What? He's neither. He's neither. 
He was born in Argentina. Really? Yeah. yeah. So how many languages does Eitan Katz speak? Uh, that just means I speak English and Hebrew. But, oh, but my father on. speaks you know, fluent Spanish and Yiddish. And yeah, after the war, um, many, many Jews came to Argentina. And my grandparents were one of them. My father was actually was born there. And he, yeah, he, he made Aliyah by himself. And he was like 14 years old wow. on a boat uh, with a whole group of Hever. Did the army, and then he came back to America, met my, met my mother. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Now, you and your brother Shlomo both play guitar. Correct. You have, you have more of a, a meaningful, deep sound, which is obviously why we're doing this in Elo. This is our Elo show. Um, but did your father play guitar also no. or not? So like where 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 did the pickup come from you and your brother? I mean, my brother started playing first. My brother started playing first. Um, I mean, my brother was very much into Rip Shlomo's music mm -hmm. in the beginning. I was going to ask you if he was like named after. I think he was no. born while he was still alive. No, no, no. no. Yeah. My grandfather is Shlomo. Oh, you right? Oh, really? Yeah, my father's father is Shlomo. Can and I make a lachaim quickly? Yeah, sure. Of course. There you go. What did you put in there, Gus? Water. <laughs> what, are you sure? <laughs> yes, we finished the vodka before. This is crown house. I don't know. Lachaim, lachaim. Lachaim, lachaim. Yeah, so he, he started playing guitar, and I, like the good younger, younger brother, brother, wanted to be like him. And I started playing guitar also. I was 16, 17, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you, of course, release your first album, your second album, the song La Mancha all of a sudden blows up and people are like... Not all of a sudden. It wasn't all of a sudden? Took some time? Yeah. Someone came over to me the other night. I was playing in Lakewood. You record this? And uh, the, whatever, Baruch Hashem, I have this nigga in Kikarov on the, on the latest album. That's right, on Ashracha. And uh, he asked me, no, why, why isn't everybody singing Kikarov? You know, why isn't it so big, blah, blah, blah. I was like... Look Good at music. that. Look at that. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. Hey, look, hey, look, um, hey, look. And I said to him, fuck it. Like, let it take time. I'd rather it not blow up. I'd rather it not like, be like, you know, oh my gosh. And then the next, next two weeks, you know, nobody. Like, La Mancha took years. I mean, the music scene has changed right. dramatically. But you also see songs, songs that do resonate do take a little longer for people to. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I mean, you know. It's, it's always a, an honor and, and, and uh, it's humbling. Well, you know, it's very thankful and grateful to Kodesh Baruch Hu for all the inspiration that I see happens you know, from the, from the but, music. But when the young Eitan Katz was learning guitar, did he figure, oh yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become a singer and I'm going to do weddings with my wedding band and I'm going to do kumzitzes and I'm going to do live in Jerusalem. I mean, no, it's, it's, more like, it's more like I need friends. <laughs> Really? <laughs> so, so um, I mean, not, not, well, maybe, you know, back then, you know. But uh, back then, I mean, 16 years old, like growing up in Los Angeles, you know, I had a wonderful chaver and everything, but you know, I, don't, I don't think anybody thinks that far. So how did you end up here? It's a good question. I was living, I got married, Baruch Hashem, in 2004. Mm-hmm. And I was learning in Yeshiva in Silver Spring, which... Yeah, so you were yeah. What? Los Angeles, Maryland. Yeah, okay. Maryland, and then Baruch Hashem, you know, the music was getting busy, and I was traveling a lot back and forth to New York. And we decided to come to Farakoi. Yeah, easy Pass didn't exist yet. Let's just save on gas. Let's just <laughs> move there. And, and, and now you, you have a minion in the white show. Baruch Hashem, yeah. It's amazing. Joey. What's up? Baruch Hashem. You know, I was wondering, because on the out, did you see his album cover? It's just like this black uh, vector outline with the payas. I was always wondering, was that part of the real Joey, wasn't it? And of course it was part of it. It started before. You, think you, guys, you guys never think met? This is a business move? This is the first time we, we met? Yeah. Wow. I mean, we talk a lot on on. on this is the WhatsApp. first time we actually met? Yeah, I believe so. <sighs> hey, look at it. I feel like we met a million times. Yes, I see. Look at that. So it was funny because I was talking to Joey the other day on my radio show, and he was telling me how uh, his father's about Chuva and how he grew up listening to A.B. Rottenberg's Marvelous Meetup Machine and Rip Shlomo. Those are the only two things he had in his car. All we had. Which is funny because, you know, you, you're listening to Be a Yid and you're listening to Bayer Priya 8s and you're wondering what is wrong with this guy? Where did he fall off? And you're like, well, if you took Rip Shlomo and you mixed it up with the Marvelous Meetup Machine, and I had a little you bit get a Joey Newcomb. I asked Shiva Band a little valid, bit. Valid point. <laughs> Come on, I like that. I mean, I think it's a lot deeper than that, but... It is deeper. It's much deeper. There was a lot of A.B. Rottenberg. I still listen to Marvelous Midos. 
I do too. You know, it's unbelievable. I was thinking the other day, I was like, the Torah says be humble in everything you do. If you're strong or smart or beautiful, it's not because of you. All the good things that we have come from above. And Anna knows Hashem has given him these gifts with love. You see how deep it is? Yeah. It's like kidified. I thought you word. were going to do the, oh, I thought he's going to go. Oh, I got my mic. These are good, like ticking yeah, Hamidus, yeah. you know? <laughs> I, I mean, those are the building blocks. They say when, when, you know, when children are young, that's when they're impressionable. I mean, look at Eitan. Eitan must have been around, and Shlomo must have been around with Shlomo when they were momish. I wasn't. I never, 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 never met him. Never met him, right? Never met him. Never met him either, really? Wow. Maybe I, have one. I take it back. Truth is, my brother. I mean, I can't speak for him. I don't know, but I, I, I maybe one distant memory when I was a kid. I mean, so if there was no connection there, then how did you even get to? How did you get to Rosh music then? Or that's what your father had in the house after he made Aliyah. I mean, we always. Oh, I now, don't we, know. now we get to the flash. Know. Was there Dvekas yeah. in your house? Was there Amy Romberg in your house? There was. Up? There was. There was Dvekas. Okay, there was. There was Avram Fried. Mm -hmm. There was Old Miami Boys Choir, right? Go, 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 Israel, Eishla. No, the Amir, Kulam Tzadiki, Yishuv Aretz. Ooh, I always wanted to be one of them. Really? Yeah, when I was a kid. I grew up and in you're like, I'm living in Los Angeles. It's never gonna. No, no, happen. no I grew up. I was, Los Angeles, was, Miami. They're sunny states, but they're no, very no, far this, away. This is where I, when I was, we lived in Israel. As a, oh, you lived in Israel. Also, so. But that was, I mean, that, and, and my father, my father, my father was his, his own, like, I mean, it's almost like my, it's, it was almost like my father just inspired us with just, like, positivity, with music. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, bedavka, this, derech, that derech, was just, just a smile and positivity. And, but I mean, hearing what you're listening to and hearing what your music you're making, you know, they're very much along a certain path. It's not about what's hot. Or about trying to mix a little bit of modern pop into it. It's about uh, you know keeping to your artistry the path that you feel. You know, inspiring music. Yes, you can update certain sounds within a realm, but not going beyond what you feel. Listen, is... I remember I remember listening to to Shlomo's music the first time, and it just sounded like this is this is the real deal. Now I wasn't at that time. I wasn't really exposed to uh, Nigunim from like the different Hasidus is like mm -hmm. I, I didn't know Chabad Nigonim, I didn't know Breslov Nigonim, I didn't know Mojitur. I, I mean I knew here and there, but I did it wasn't a part of my It wasn't you know, a ya ben Moshe. <laughs> so But that was the, that, that that was the beginning of of understanding that there's you know like when I was in high school I used to share it with my brother. My brother had a stack of tapes and he would sit there and transcribe. A lot of the tired from Shlomo, and we would listen. And I, a lot of the Nagunim, they're singing. You know, they're singing now as if new. Like, I, I really did kind of grow up, you know, with them. Not from a little age, but mm -hmm. from like my my years of you know maturity, which I'm still trying to you know get to. It's like I remember back in 2000 or 2001 when they came out with the Nig and the Shama, and everybody was like, wow. And all of a sudden, oh, hot in the kinder look and covering yeah. it and this and that, like became. Yeah, but, 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 but believe it or not, the, the, when I heard it. I totally like. Very different. Like, Very that wasn't. That was. Uh, minimum, yeah. That was. Like. That, that's really the story, I feel like, of, of my musical journey, mm -hmm. of trying to just stay true to what, like, it really is, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's just... But Joey, what, what happens to you in Rekhoi Shkodesh El, El Zman? Like, do you, does your music, uh, and Eitan will ask you this also afterwards, does your music change? Does, you know, do you try to play certain different types of Nagunim? Does it inspire you to play more of certain Nagunim? Or is it, is it just that... This is the way it is all year. It's like Elul by you all year, and this is just that. <laughs> well, Elul is, Elul is, you know, growing up, I hated Elul. I'll be honest. For me, Elul was like, Elul! And, and you know, obviously there is a natural Indian of, of fear. Right. And nervousness. So what they say, uh, Melech Basada. Melech, Melech Basada, right? Yeah. If, you, if, you're, if you're getting back into a relationship, so that first meeting is really exciting, but at some, although there are nerves. Right. 
So lately, Elul for me is a it's 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 a it's a shtickle simcha, you know what I'm saying? It's like I'm happy to get back into it. I'm happy to reconnect again. Obviously, it's nervous. But it's nervous. But it's you're worried about spending the two days in shul, and then you're worried about the actual fast. I'm actually, actually looking tshuva. forward to, to saying slichas, to doing tshuva. I'm actually mm-hmm. looking forward to get reconnected, you know, lately. Now, by your, by your minion, slichas isn't like 15, well, 20 minutes of just saying it quickly? We I mean, don't have slichas by our minion. We do. We don't have slichas. <laughs> I'm just making you it You guys say the night before or what? No, like we don't have, we don't say slichas. <laughs> no, 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 we say slichas. We don't have a, an official slichas. Yeah, you know, but okay, um, yeah, it's like Armenian was formed after. I mean, at least for me, like after I had like my place where I used to dive in slichas, mm-hmm. and dive in Tinek, and they wanted to do it, but you know, Hashem, we have something going. So, right, the the slichas. I mean, I'm going to be the first night slichas. I'm going to be with a certain chavra. You know, there will be music. There will not be music during slichas. There'll be nagunim and singing, but there won't be music during slichas. But before and after, there will be music. They always worry. I always wonder about that, Eitan. You know, you see the the videos of Yehuda Green and many other people, especially uh, the Sfaradim already started slichas, their shchaydish or whatnot. But I mean, what what is the Indian you know music during slichas to like just nagunim and music before and after? Is there a is there an Indian about not doing it during or? Listen, I'll tell you. I'm not saying right or wrong. No, 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 no. I'll tell you, like, just straight off the bat. I, mm-hmm. I, everybody does what they feel comfortable with. Right. And I respect and give space to everybody to do what they want to do. You know, because I, I don't have any authority over what should be done. I, can, I, I barely know what's done. For me personally, you know, in Teaneck, we have Baruch Hashem. It's like it turned into like this. Last year, there were a thousand people. Wow. Packed. Really? Yeah, yeah. Baruch Hashem, like with. Moshe Tzvi Weinberg, who is a big, big mashpia out there, he speaks before, and I do like a, I, I ask people, like, please don't clap after the songs. Like, don't, it's like, I barely want to even, like, I, I always feel weird. I always, I, I always feel like there's a part of me, like, I, like, Baruch Hashem, like, I, I was zocha to go to, like, certain, like, yeshivas where, where, like, uh, a certain balance was instilled in me to try and understand, like, to be true to the moment. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like there's nothing more that I want to do than to sing and, and to use that vehicle to, you know, to make it happen. So you're standing up there and you're caught up in the moment and then you, then you hear this and you're like, it kills it for you. Like, slichos, like, I want to hide behind, under a table. No, I don't it's think you like, mean clapping to the beat. No, no, I meant like, I meant like, I meant like after. after. Oh, like, go ahead. Very good. Very nice. You know? <laughs> so you talk to me and the people should be into the moment of the moment. Oh, absolutely. And, and by slichas itself, for sure. I don't, that I, I mean, again, no judgment. Everybody does what they do. Right. But like, for me personally, I can't, I, I just, it's not, it's, it's not the right time for me. No, I mean, think about where I'm coming from. See the shishtival where, you know, the Rebbe is sitting up there and it's. It's serious. There's it's no serious. Question. It's 100%. mournful. It's, it's not niguni at all. It happens to be there's a chasab cipher about music. That's, yeah. that, that's the issue that I was dealing with. Mm-hmm. There's, there, there happens to be this Torah about, there's a big issue about having an instrument during. That, what? During the sleep. Yeah, yeah. That's a separate issue. Sleep or dominating? Dominating in general. So, uh, but, wait, Eitan, you've never... And we do it. Wait, we do you've it never used a guitar during Howl ever or anything? If it's not in a, a shul. You be quiet, I'm talking. <laughs> yeah. No, no, again, I'm not... Uh, yes, I, I've, I have. And I, I, and I have no... You know, Baruch Hashem, I speak to my Rebbe about mm-hmm. it, and they show me the halacha, you know, guidelines and everything. Right. No, I'm talking now, like, in Pneumius. I'm saying, like, by Slichos... It's not about a performance, like, it's even, about connecting. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying it's not that you can't connect with, with music. You yeah. can connect with music. But there is a certain part of me, of a certain yiras hayoim, mm-hmm. you know, a certain understanding of what the day is that lends itself to shy away from the musical instruments, that, you know, to kind of like just take everything out and like just, you know, I, I, I always wonder, like, you know, are, I, like, I, I always want to, like, run to, like, I don't know. When I'm in, like, the most, like, lit like, environment, I want to mm-hmm. take my guitar. And I want to, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> and when I'm in, like, the, 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 the hippie, you know, guitar, I want to, like, throw <laughs> my seal at them, you know. And, like, even, and that just shows, like, I'm just pulled in each, each, every direction. And my life is just no, trying to. No, you don't to, like anybody. Is. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm there. I'm like, who he are you? He wants to help everybody the way he feels is necessary. <laughs> I need to help myself. <laughs> For me, I look at it more like like a, like a, you know an emergency. You know, there are people that are that need to dance. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, we're living in a generation where, you know, obviously it's gallus, there's a lot of tragedies, but, you know. And people who need simcha in their life because it's, right. life can be depressing So a lot sometimes of even if like, let's say you have a guy who, if, if I go over to him and I explain to him, you know, the Indian, leave me alone. You grab him through a guitar, you grab him through a nigga, and then eventually, slowly but slowly. So the first song you released last year was before Yom Naram time. The first song was Matzah Shabbos Nachmo. And it, it was before, that's before. Right before Yom Naram, yeah. And it was about uh, Chuba or something. B'nai Amelech. B'nai Amelech. No, that was the next one. The next one was the Yom Naram time, right, right. B'nai Amelech was, you know, that's... Uh, that's loving Eden. Yeah. That's looking at everybody. And the second the same. one was a song. It's it's never too late. It's never too late. That was right before. That was that might have been a Sarah Shemay Chuva. I don't so remember what, correctly. Like when did that? These songs were written before. These songs mm -hmm. were inspired way before. Um, the Bnei Hamelech song. I was davening in a shul in Queens, Kesatayda. I don't know if you ever been there. Ever been to Kesatayda? Rabbi Rosenblatt. Sure. Big big tzaddik. He was nifter recently. Mm -hmm. In his shul, you had every single type of Jew, from the weirdest to the coolest, from this type of shirt to that type of shirt. That they have literally, what people like to take pictures by the kaisel of, of a soldier next to a chusid with a stamel. Right, right, you can do that there. You can always do it in Kassatari in Queens. Um, <laughs> and I'm davening. I'm almost in middle of Shemana Esrei. Right? It wouldn't sell. <laughs> it just wouldn't sell as much. And the kaisel was like, I'm davening, and right in front of me, literally in front of me, there's a chusid. There's a, a, a breast of a guy. You can see the difference in the stomachus and the breast. Little bush, right? Yeah. yeah. Then there's a Svardi, big in Queens. Then there's a, a Litvak. You can tell, you can tell, you know what I'm saying? And then next to all oh, these four heavy, you ready for this? There's a guy with a frock. He has a big red beard and an up hat. So for me, the guy walked out of Williamsburg or Borough Park. He moves his hat. I thought he was going to say there was a yucky next. And I was like, how can you tell? Uh, that no, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. The yucky moves was his late hat. this time. He moves his hat. The, he moves his hat, and I see, a, 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 you know the white keeper through guys with the blue yeah, in yeah, Israel? Yeah. He's wearing that under the up hat. Interesting. I'm like, and then I see on his sitter, he has a picture of the Chacham on the sitter. It's a Eidut Mizrach sitter. This guy's mamish all these Yidin and one guy. Interesting. Like <laughs> Middle Shmanesra, you understand? I have to do true, but to this day for this. The Middle Shmanesra, I'm looking at these guys, <laughs> and I'm like, because we're all davening to the same Hashem, to the same Father in Shemai. Right. Shemai. Middle of Mincha, we're all at the same shul, we're all dominating the same Mincha. It happens to be, he's like that, he's like that, he's like that. Middle of Shmanes, right? It popped into my head, but you know, I couldn't take out my phone and record it in Middle Shmanes, right? Because I already had enough chuva to do it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. At, right at the davening, you know, literally I finished Shmanes, I backed up, through, I walked outside and recorded the song. The best songs for me were written in like 30 seconds. I thought I was going to say between Atachoynein and Hashem. <laughs> the best song, Mom, is Milo Shmakalein. <laughs> I walked out and recorded it and then developed it from there, you know? But it was an inspired moment. It's Never Too Late. It's Never Too Late was by myself in the car in the middle of the summer. I was working in a certain camp. I was feeling very schwach, mm -hmm. very, very schwach about, like, where I was holding Stam, you know? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Everybody, everybody has like a moment. Right. Everybody knows what they have to deal with. So I was feeling schwach in Yiddishkeit in general. And and also, within 30 seconds, I had a ukulele in the car. Pulled out the uke. How many different instruments do you own? A uke, a uke, it's the same in you. Hey, Tan, you have a uke also sitting in your car? It's beginner's, it's beginner's guitar. I happen not, but... <laughs> <laughs> I pulled out the uke and I was like, Sheva yipol yipol you know somebody who has another Sheva Yipol too, I was right? going to say. Yeah, I was wondering if you know it about that. It was on the Ura album. Really? I love that. Play, play it for him, play it for him, because I love that song. It's extremely different. It's a great it song. It's probably the most like, fast rock and roll song I've ever oh, recorded. Oh, it's fast. No, Joey. <laughs> Sheva yipol tzadik, tzadik vekam, vekam. Sheva Ipotadi, 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 Sheva too late to correct your mistake Cause we know ain't shum yehush ba'olam klah No, 
it's never too late to correct your mistakes Cause we know ancient years by all I'm clean. I was giving myself chizuk, really. I didn't and it worked, and he gave other people chizuk. Can I show you a message? Can I show you something? Sure. You can read it to me, you can show so it. I thought I was giving myself chizuk. But then... I released this. I was at Sarasim Chuva. So we're talking Arab Yom Kippur. Mama, almost a year ago. That's it. It was almost a year. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, it's a year from my first release. But listen to this message. Uh, it's a I, voice note, or it's a text no. Note? It's a. I'll read it to you. It's right. a, you know. Um, oh, I gotta scroll through here. Hey, Todd, did you come prepared with messages too? I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. You really from my wife. That? Please get home. <laughs> I need your help. You're really surprised. I remember that song. What? Um, Come yeah, on. I mean, truth is, if there's anybody that's holding, it's you, Yossi. I played a lot. <laughs> yeah, Joey. Guys, so I released this as Eretz Yom Right. The guy said, it's Erev Yom Kippur. I had my kit on. I was still sending out, you might me, you might me, all that stuff, you know. <laughs> still, you know, with the WhatsApp. Eight times the digital age, yeah. <laughs> So I'm still, at, you know, I have the kittle. I'm it getting should be ready. like an emoji. Are you Michael? Are you Michael with emoji? <laughs> with, the, with the face like. And then know, there should be another one. If you're not, Hashem's not Michael you. And that's it. <laughs> Kitsu. Mamish had a kittle. Yeah, I was ready. I was holding the machs. I was getting ready to go to the Hale Gavinion. You got to get a message like this from a yid. I want you to know I'm going through some stuff. Whatever stuff is. Okay. And today, he wrote, which was Arvim Kipper. For some reason, didn't mean much to me. You know, it's a whole lot void there, Yom Kippur, but mm-hmm. it didn't mean much. I sat before and I listened to your new song and I ended up sobbing. It touched my heart and I want you to know what your music is doing. I'm ready for Kol Nidre. Wow. I'm reading this, I'm like, David uses you, Mamish, as a Kli. Mm-hmm. It's an Achrayas. I thought I was giving myself chizik. I wrote a song in the car. I never had any dream of putting stuff out until eventually I realized it's time. Then we put this out and that already made the whole thing Kadai, you know? But when I go even anywhere, when I go to the camps, the number one requested song, aside from Thank You Hashem, obviously, right. is It's Never Too Late. People need to hear the message. Amazing. You know? Maskim Rabbi Yassi. Maskim, Maskim. You know, Eitan also released a really nice album recently, a really special album. And it's funny because Eitan's musical chops have also changed a lot. For example, he has a beautiful song that with Benny Friedman called the Fiyah Sharam that Rambam arranged masterfully. Yes. And Gal Gershovsky was just here and he was he like, yeah, I played on it. He it was, it was such a, he's like, I listened to the song. Um, but this is like a different side of Eitan Cast than people have seen before. There is the niggin there. He did put out a music video for the niggin on the album, but the Bafi Sharm is not your, your Eitan that we've known for the last 15 plus years. Might not be, the, yeah, the Eitan that I've known either. <laughs> like, uh, what is it, a waltz? I mean, oh, there it is. Yeah. It's right there. Um, yeah. Uh, this was a niggin. This was a real. What can I say? That's the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wrote that. It looks good on the big screen. Oh, look who's here. Sorry. Um, (laughs) Is that a surprise one? I don't know. You don't see? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I wrote. Want to come sit? Not yet. <laughs> I wrote. Uh, I wrote this nigga in Amsterdam. Actually. Really? We're yeah. doing Amsterdam. I was doing it on my way to London for the Shabbos project a couple of years ago. Ah. And uh, my violinist, one in the picture, Jeremy and I were were um, right there in the back. Mm-hmm. We were getting ready for the gig and and. Um, while we're doing it, I just and then I was like, I called Jeremy. It doesn't sound room. like a guitarish bass song. No, 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 it's at not. All. No, but it's so that, that, that's the thing. Listen, I could have. But well, you composed it on the guitar, right? I composed it. I know I composed it more in my head. Oh, you did, yeah. But I called Jeremy, and then we played it a little bit. We played it, and then, like, I knew that this that the arrangement is beyond my. Right? I just, you know, I could. I mean, because you've been arranging your albums since Correct. day one. And, and I could have done it just like a nice. I could have done it, but I was like, no, no, no. So I called Rambam. Rambam and I were working together for many years. Right. 
And he put together a masterpiece at Baruch Hashem. Like, it's, it's just awesome. And the question is, where did Benny Friedman come in exactly? Where did Benny Friedman come in? When did Benny Friedman come in? Um, I knew that I wanted um, someone to sing it with me. You wanted a contrast of a voice or something. I wanted some type of chavrusa mm -hmm. on the song. And I was thinking, like, who, who could do this? Who could do justice to the, to the, you know, almost like regal sound of this? It's a niggin. It's a beautiful niggin. The words are, it's almost like a... Someone asked me, oh, so it's a mojah to niggin. I was like, what? You thought it was a mojah to niggin? That's yeah. the biggest compliment. But when I thought about, you know, when I thought of Benny, like, Benny has the voice, the beautiful range, capability, but he also has that Yiddish guy, that, that voice that is such a... You know, it was perfect, and, and we met a couple of times, and, uh, and that's that. And, then, and, that, and that's that, and we came to the studio, and we, the music video did very well. From what I remember, people really, yeah, I mean, I got, I got it requested many times on yeah. the air. People yeah. still, still. We just sang it together for the first time live two nights when? ago in really? Lakewood, yeah, yeah. In Lakewood? Out of all places. And, and I was nobody called me. And I was shocked at how many people, I mean. I was in Lake so. Terrace. Where were you? No, I was at Terrace Chinka. You were in Lake Terrace. I was Lake Terrace. Lake Terrace. Yeah. Okay, okay, so. Yeah. I was down the road. No, and then, Shlomo. of course, you joined also on another song with your brother Shlomo. Brother so this Shlomo, is the second duet. You, you guys tend to do that on each other's albums yeah, here or there. Yeah. What is that nice. like? I gotta wonder what that's like for brothers. It's, that's what it is. It's just two brothers hanging out, having a good time. And, no, but my, my brother and I, we have this like, very you know, meaningful relationship. Of, and you actually worked on the song together, I think, on the, 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 the lyrics or the melody you said at one point, or you composed it together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of Lee Shawasko for a second. No, this is Al Tadikin. Yeah. yeah. Al Tadikin was written. You told me you wrote some of it one time. No, 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 no. We wrote it. We were playing a wedding in Chicago together a bunch of years ago. And we, um, did, we, we sang the niggin together. Mm -hmm. And then we were doing a concert in New York together. And it was right after Steinman was Nifter. It was Hanukkah. Rav Steinman was Nifter, I think, a few days before Hanukkah. And I just had the inspiration, and he was, you know, my brother was masking, and, and we just put the words. We didn't know if it was going to be recorded like that, but I wanted to put the words of Allah Tzaddikim, you know, because it just felt like when, when, when a gadol is nifter, it just feels very lonely yeah. in the world. It feels very scary, like you, you don't want to go out of the house, like you don't want to go Because you never know what to do, because uh, it's a famous, uh, famous well-known fact that, you know, that uh, if bad stuff are going on with Yidin, or if we were, we were supposed to be punished, sometimes like Baruch will take away a Godol yeah, because yeah, of that. Yeah. So I just didn't so want to... Know, like, everyone feels responsible somehow, even though it might not be a particular person, it might not be a particular town, but everybody just kind of hits everybody at the same time. The Nigan brought Nechama, Is that what we're saying? I think, that it, I think that it brought out the need to connect, you know, the Sim Chalkeinu Imahem, like, 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 like we have to just remind ourselves where we have to be connected to. We're connected, you know, we might have like a thousand friends on WhatsApp, but we, we, we don't talk to anybody, you know, like the MS at the end of the day. And like, if you want to, like, who do I want to connect to? Who do I want to have a relationship with? The song, you know, the... It's like a bakasha. It's not just a, it's like a... Sim chalkei no sim, sim chalkei no sim, ve sim chalkei no im ha'am. Joe, you know all of Eitan's music? It's avoided, Dick. Is he going to join your your sharing the avoidus? Your player's next album, possibly, or maybe even duet? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good idea. For what? For what? To do something together one day. I mean, we've been doing things together for many years. Already. I mean, actually, like record it, well, not just do it. You can't take videos that you've kept. Yeah, you know? I was gonna say. <laughs> um, but the funny thing is about both of you. You know, now that we're winding down, um, everybody puts you guys in this small box. It says Kumzit singer. You have a very popular wedding band. You know, yeah, yes, you do chuppas, and they might do like a Mishkochei Kumzit style song. But I've seen your. I see you jumping and playing with the band. And even you, Joe, I saw a couple of clips recently of you at weddings. So, I mean, the, I it think gets it's, labored, it gets wild. I think it's more about being a meaningful musician slash singer. And I don't even know if no meaningful is yeah. the word, but I guess giving over the right feeling. 
Like yeah. the Levim used to sing in the base met. The, the idea is Avoida, that's the idea. So mm-hmm. now the Avoida is to sing together with Yidin Tzazamin and a slow nigga, and now the Avoida is to jump and scream until you have no more Kayach, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, thank you, Hashem, is not, is not a... In the camps, most of the things that I did in camps this summer, I would say two hours out of two and a half hours was jumping, singing, Lebedic, dancing, Fabreng. Was anybody asking for any material not your, or you only played your own material? No, I play everything. Everything, How much is everything in the world. We played a lot of Kikarov. A lot of Kikarov, yeah. That's also a beautiful song. Yeah. He even knows how to play the intro. Wow. You tell he's really, he's really, he wasn't transcribing tapes. When you heard the song, what did you think, Eitan? What song? When you heard Thank You, Hashem. I, I love everything Joey does. <laughs> I told you, I, I, I called you when, when, your, when your CD came out. I called him and I said to him that, that I'm just so... To use the word proud sounds like, oh, I'm proud of you. But, <laughs> but, but MS, I am proud of you. I, I, I am, I am. I am like, you know, I am like really You're happy. You're proud of the style of music, I'm, with the I, messages he put out. I'm proud of what out. he's doing. I'm not, I don't, you know, it's just such a, it's, I'm so happy. And I'm, I don't, you don't take it the wrong way, right? That's the same Amazing. Way. The right way, you know. It's, it's a big nachas to see somebody go out there and then bring people, which make people smile left and right. And, you know, and Joey knows how to sing the guna. Mm-hmm. You know? There's, priya, there, 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 listen, there, there, there's the fun part of Joey. Bore which, priya, bore priya, bore priya. And, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know. How you, know, you How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How are you doing? Exactly. <laughs> Every, but, but, and then there's the part where, you know, we're, we're real nigunim, and that, that, that's what this role needs. Yeah. That's what the, the combination of simcha, tzuma, and the ability to be in the same simcha, tzuma, but channel it through panemius, and, you know, a certain, that's, that's what we try to do in the minion. Mm-hmm. Even though he's never there because yeah. he's, you know, whatever. Well, he's not he's not there I'm sorry, I'm in um, <laughs> Davening Mincha, Nebraska for some Chabad. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm not sure. You know, Baruch Hashem, it's good. So Joy, Maisa, since the album came out, you've been, uh, Baruch Hashem, busy traveling and... It's been pretty wild, Baruch Hashem, you know? And when these camps are bringing you, they're bringing you as, as a musical act or as a kumzitz? That's, that's the other question. So that's part of the same nekudah we're talking about. It's a mix. It's mm-hmm. not... It's a mix. It, they're, not, they're not calling it a kumzitz, you know? A concert with Although, Joy Dukum. part of it is. By the way, what's the story, Joey Yosef? Why, why both? Why not one? Oh, this is. This. I had to ask this. You know, we're basically almost done. Before, this. before the CD came out, yeah. he must have. I mean, maybe it wasn't only me, okay, yeah. but he must have texted me six thousand times. Hey, what should I do, Joey Yosef? Joey, Joey Yosef. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> sure. <laughs> the whole world, for some reason, I'll tell you, it all started in high school. People write the checks. They write Joey. Right. When they call me, it's Yosef. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? When I get called for an Ali, it's not Joey. You know what I'm saying? It's all cash, by the way. <laughs> My father hates it. He's like, I didn't name you Joey at the bris. Tells me all the time. Really? He says that? Says that. My, what happened was, I, my... Le- I actually have a wooden Joey at home. My mother got for me. Really? Yeah. My legal name is Yosef Israel Mayer. Really? My legal name, yeah. I'm going to beat you up. On the birth I'm going to beat you up even more. With On the Joker. license. You know, my Elise is Joseph. My mother shortened it to Joey for when I was a you know, little child. <laughs> when I was in high school, you know, you know when you're going through the, the you know, the stage of cla- trying to find clarity. You were right? high school, you were in Queens, you said, right? I was in Muncie, Shadi Arazim. Shadi Arazim. So I was in the, more of the avoid of like, you know, like, you know. I was more like that avoid of trying to find myself. You heard of that Zachem <laughs> before, you know? I know he's there. Whoa. <laughs> that just means you've been to Jewish weddings, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's, that's all that means. 
in the last 30 years or something. So somebody coined that. I think it was a Rebbe of mine even. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. It was like Joey, rock star Joey, this Joey. And then before you know it, it stuck. Mm. It stuck. And it just became like, it became the thing. And everybody's calling me Joey. That's why I wasn't sure with the album, you know? Right. So I sort of put both and then I sort of accepted the fact that I'm known as Joey, but eventually we're going to put out something like this. You know, my name is not Joe. My name is Yossele from Queen. Yossele. You ask him, Rabbi Yossi. I ask him, I ask him. I, have, I don't have the same problem with names, but I mean, with, I mean Eitan, I'm not Ethan, but like, you know. Uh-huh. But, but I play, I was playing a Hasidic wedding once, but I don't play that often, but like, Hasidim, I'm, I'm playing nigunim after nigun after nigun after nigun, like at this chasna, a Hasidim come up to me like, oh my gosh, it's so geschmack. You know, like. What's your name? He's like, no, no, no. He says like, you know, why don't people, you know, so he says, why don't more people in the Hasidim show about, like hire you to play weddings for, for them? I was like, listen, you know, Eitan isn't exactly the most like Hasidish name, it's probably an Israeli name. So he's like, Taka, maybe you should change your name, you know? <laughs> he said, you know, writers, they have like a pen name for like, you know, when they put out maybe books. That's why I'm maybe you should have like a Maish you know what I'm saying? For like the Hasidah show, you should be Maish. You know, <laughs> well, you could go Aisin. No Aisin. problem. Instead of Avraham HaKoyen Friedman, it went to Avram Fried. Avraham HaKoyen Friedman. <laughs> that's a good out. Uh, yeah, so first of all, I'd like to thank both of you for joining me. I had a real good shmack time. It's a real for our brain comes its L over here. Shouldn't we sing a nigga together, I guess? I definitely want to sing a nigga. Thank you very much. I want to wish both of you a ksiru, a ksiru, a ksiru, a guga ben shtur. You too and your family. You should have a year full, have a slacha. Amen. Mazel, bracha, parnasa, gzunt. Gzunt. Yeshuot, kaparot, nechamot. Reva, masala. Shalom, bayes. Shalom, bayes. The guys that are out every night, you got to say shalom, bayes. Pnimius. 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 Amen. Bourbon. Amazing. So that wraps up our show. Please make sure to subscribe below to our YouTube channel, schmooze.live. For any questions about our show, comments, or to sponsor a show, please email info at schmooze.live. Until next time, I'm Yossi Zweig, wishing you a good gebenstjahr. Me, Eitan Katz, enjoy Newcom. Have an amazing Yontav, and see you on the next Schmooze. Moves.live. Follow us, subscribe, and share.